Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the December 10th, 2013 meeting of the Town of Wareham Board of Selectmen and Sewer Commissioners. May we have the roll call, please? Present is Selectman Whiteside, Selectman Tropiano, Selectman Slavin, Selectman Teitelbaum, Town Administrator Derek Sullivan. Okay, next item, please. Announcements, Mrs. Whiteside. Yes, um, the community of Wareham rose to extraordinary heights by raising more than $50,000 to send the Tigers to their championship tournament. Unfortunately, they lost both of their games, but what they did do, and which is much more important than winning those games, they won't think so, um, is that they brought the community together. I'm very proud of this community in that it was able to, at this time of year, um, collect that kind of money for a bunch of kids to create wonderful memories. And second, um, we all know that Nelson Mandela died. He was an extremely controversial person during his lifetime, but he won more than 250 honors, including the Nobel Peace Prize and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Um, one of his quotes, or actually two of his quotes, that I'd like to read out. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. His state ceremony funeral will be, um, it's all being live streamed now. Um, on the 15th in Kunu, South Africa. Mr. Tropiano? Okay, here we go. I got stuff. First one I have for immediate release from the Warham Police Department. The Warham Police Department, in partnership with Target and Walmart, will hold its fifth annual Stuff a Cruiser toy drive event at the Warham stores on Saturday. December 14th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Collected toys will be turned over to the Dick Maloney Youth Foundation Christmas Toy Drive for distribution to children in need throughout Wareham and surrounding areas. Please bring new unopened and unwrapped toys to stuff into the cruiser parked at Target and Walmart on Saturday and say hello to the Wareham PD officers and special guest Santa. That will be at the Target location. Who we'll look forward to assisting the Maloney Youth Foundation with bringing happiness to deserving children with this Christmas season. The Wareham Police Department would like to extend their thanks and appreciation to the students of Upper Cape Cod Regional Technical School who designed and crafted the Stuff a Cruiser signs and will be on display at each toy location. Buzz's Bay Productions is having a holiday craft fair on Saturday, December 14th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And they're off to Cranberry Highway, East Wareham. We have the Wareham Coffee Hour. Mr. White is running with Mr. Rudy Santos, president of the Wareham Summer Celebration 2014, 9 a.m. Thursday, December 11th at room 225 at the Multi Service Center. We also have the Warham Village Association. We will be running their Christmas parade, weather permitting, on December 14th. A rain, which could be snow date, December 15th. Bob, is that the 3 o'clock it starts? It does. 3 p.m.? It looks like snow, which would be great. Which would be better. <laughs> and that's going to start down at the backside of Merchant's Way, come around by Bessie Park. We'll stage on Merchant's Way and, and come around then go up and, and then up to Town Hall. I'm going to actually end at Green. Green. At the Green at Center Park. Thank you. Uh, we also have, there's a blood drive, I think, at the Elks. Unfortunately, they didn't send us any information on it. Um, if you could, I think it's in Wareham Week, uh, the community events. Uh, just let organizations know, at this time of year, I saw four or five uh, other organizations doing charitable events. If they would wish to send stuff to us, we have one more meeting before Christmas, which is the 17th. If they have any events, please forward them to us. We'd be glad to read them for them. Thank you. 
Uh, I just have one thing. Last week, uh, Selectman Slavin, uh, Administrator Sullivan, and our Community and Economic Director uh, Salpina met with uh, the engineers who are going to be uh, designing the platform for the uh, Cape Flyer stop in Wareham on Merchant's Way. Uh, initially, we had thought that the platform was going to be 300 feet long. They've shrunk that down to 240 feet. It's going to start at the telephone pole that's uh, pretty much lined up almost with the, the fire station wall. If you stand in front of the fire station, look to the left-hand side of the fire station, there's that retaining wall uh, that runs along towards the back. Uh, it's it's going to start roughly at that telephone pole and go approximately 240 feet uh, up, which I guess is north from there. Uh, it's going to be, uh, they believe, 10 feet wide. Uh, there are going to be two ramps uh, accessing it in the middle. And they are going to uh, probably have the plans ready in about a month, they thought. Uh, we notified the Conservation Commission that they would be hearing from these people because the work is taking place in a river protection zone. Uh, so CONCOM has to be involved. But uh, things are proceeding forward. It looks like the state is very serious about this. We were also told that if the event that they are unable to complete this for some reason, by the uh, Memorial Day start of train service, that they will utilize the area behind the existing railway station uh, to stage from there. They will have temporary ramps put up so that handicapped accessibility will be possible. But they're really looking forward to trying to get the thing done by uh, Memorial Day. So that's all I have. Next item, please. Just one quick thing. Uh, for those people who are concerned about Walmart and the location up in West Wareham, I believe the, either yesterday or today the paperwork was filed in the building department uh, to go ahead uh, with the uh, foundation plans that came in. Uh, things have been kind of on hold. We, we had heard that the MEPA process was going to require what they call a turtle sweep, which would have had to wait till April. I'm not sure the exact status, but it looks as if the time frame may be changed, may be moved up again. So we will let you know once we find out definitely. But they did issue a check, Mr. Sullivan, for somewhere close to $80,000. Just happened, which certainly will help us along. One last, one last thing on the announcements. Uh, Mr. Sullivan has helpfully dug up a Wareham Week article uh, regarding the blood drive at the Elks. Uh, I'll read it. The American Red Cross will Thank be you. holding a Wareham Community Blood Drive on Thursday, December 12th from 2 p.m. until 7 p.m. at the Wareham Elks Lodge. Uh, to make an appointment to donate blood, please call 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit redcrossblood.org. So you need to call for an appointment. Unlike the vans that come by the hospital where you can just walk in, uh, show them your identification, and uh, drip away, the, the Red Cross wants you to call them. Uh, this also brings to mind uh, something else. Uh, at this point, I think I would like to ask uh, Caitlin Russell to step forward. Caitlin's in the back there. Come on up. She's going to give us blood. <laughs> <laughs> right up. Uh, just so that everybody knows, this is Caitlin's last week uh, working with Wareham Week. This will be the last Board of Selectmen's meeting uh, that she's covering. She's moving on in life. It's been a pleasure uh, speaking with her. It's been a pleasure to read her stories, uh, and uh, she's been a, a pretty darn good reporter, so I just want to give her a round of applause. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you. Now we can move on to the next item. Next favorite is citizens' participation. Anybody? Nobody to speak to the board tonight? Wow. Next item, please. Uh, authorization to sign bills and documents. Don't believe I have any here. We have approval of minutes. Yep. Let's see what we got. Need a motion to accept the minutes of November 26th. Second. Motion made by Selectman Slavin, seconded by Selectman Tropiano. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? 400 approved. 401. No. I oh. mean, uh, Three sorry, 301. Zero 301. Zero sorry about that. I didn't hear your abstention. We'll make a motion to accept the minutes of December 3rd, 2013. Second. All in favor? Aye. You didn't second it. 
I just seconded. Did you? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Didn't hear you. It was motion made by Selectman Slavin, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Three zero one. Next up is interview and appointment to CETA. Mr. Brady. Come on up. Boy, he cleans up pretty good, doesn't he? <laughs> Careful, next time he'll bring a dog for you. No, uh, no, no. no. You have, to vacuum, have to vacuum the dog hair off. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you just briefly uh, tell us why uh, you want to serve on the CETA board and what you think you'd bring to the position. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Mr. Administrator, uh, my name is Bob Brady for the record. Um, I have been an applicant uh, for any vacant positions to the CETA board for probably going on a couple of years now. Um, and I have participated uh, considerably over a number of years, maybe 20 or so, um, with community and economic development. Um, very va was very active with real estate sales and development for a number of years through the 80s and 90s. Um, I currently actually uh, sit as president to the Wareham Village Association and I see that um, as a very complementary position between our organization uh, together with downtown business and beyond and with the CETA efforts. So I'm, I'm excited about that relationship. Um, I. Uh, very much I'm interested in where the future of Wareham goes. Um, also very much interested in seeing to it that um, with this new information relative to the Cape Flyer, um, together with being part of the whole downtown equation, um, that we are, and I, I got to congratulate many of you, um, continue to be out in front of the opportunity so that we're prepared for the best opportunity. Um, so with that, um, I have met uh, our new director, or newer, newest director, um, and I know the members of the CETA board quite well. So I look forward to the opportunity to have this uh, continued combined relationship. Thank you. Questions from the board? Um, I don't believe that I've ever actually met you, or if I have, I don't remember it. So. <laughs> Um, it, it stinks to get old, trust me. <laughs> yeah. If I don't write it so down and then remember where I wrote it. You're saying <laughs> that I did it. meet you, but I don't remember it. <laughs> we, we've met. <laughs> okay. Nice to meet you again. Okay, nice to meet you again. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think that you've explained yourself very well, um, and I welcome your input. I understand that you sometimes are a controversial person, but join the group. Is that from what you hear? <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm not controversial. I might speak my mind. <laughs> and there are probably those from time to time that don't necessarily agree with my mind. But if that's controversial, uh, so be it. Um, but but I, I do, I will tell you this. I will always do my homework. Um, I will never speak out of term. Um, and so if I have something to say, it's because I have a feeling about the way things either are or should be. Or, but if that's controversial, well, then I guess I'm guilty. Thank you. You're welcome. I move we approve Robert Brady, the Community and Economic Development Authority, to a term to expire no later than June 30th, 2014. Second. Motion made by Selectman Tropiano, seconded by Selectman Slavin. Anything else on the question? I just want to thank Bob. Uh, his application actually goes back to June of 2010. Thanks for sticking with it. You're welcome. Yes, likewise. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, 4 0 0. Thank it's you, unanimous. Thank you, Bob. Thank have you. Uh, have thank a good you. holiday, all of you. Well, thank you. And thank you for stepping up to the plate and uh, gotta, continuing to serve the town. See you Saturday. Don't forget to yeah. go get sworn in, Bob. Okay, next item, please. I'm going to ask the board, do you want to do the license permits now? or do you No, want let's to do, do that. Let's, let's do them last. Okay, then we'll or, go. I, I know, actually, I know that uh, there is one item on the agenda that we will probably hold off and do the permits ahead of. Uh, I understand that Mrs. Dunham called the office and hoped that we could hold off on the discussion, discussion about condensing committees uh, until she could possibly get here sometime, hopefully right after 8. So... 
Uh, other than that, though, why don't we go forward with the rest of the business and hold off on all of these uh, licenses and permits? Until the end? Yes. Okay. okay. Next item will be then number seven, other sewer business. Mr. Campino, I think, is here. Well, Mr. Campino, why don't you come forward? Yeah, this is interesting. Somehow with the, uh, the lengthy agenda and all of the uh, liquor renewals, uh, we've managed to turn the sewer business upside down. We've, we're starting off with any other business, and then we'll get to the specific items, so we've reversed the order on you tonight. Uh, Selectman Slavin? We have one issue that's come up, uh, and it has to do, I think, with policy on uh, how we build for EDUs on certain types of businesses. We don't really have any paperwork here in front of us, but I'd like to make sure this gets on the agenda with Ms. Campino. Uh, right at, we could do it maybe the 7th of January. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, you know me. I want to get this straightened out as soon as possible. So we can go into more detail and stuff and make sure it's on the agenda with an explanation. Well, yes, and that will also provide uh, Director Campina with an opportunity to, to provide us with uh, what he's found absolutely. and his, his documentation. So, absolutely, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. He'll be prepared when he comes in and uh, won't be won't be surprised by. I'll send it to you. I'll, I'll, I'll well, get it to Mr. We'll Sullivan. We'll send it to you. Yeah, to you. we'll work with you again. Thanks, does, guy. Does he know what, what we're talking yes. about? Okay. Yes. Uh, any other other sewer business? Uh, I just have, I have one thing. How are we coming with the tie and bond uh, report? We were uh, hoping, of course, for delivery soon, and by the end of the year, obviously, we're not going to be able to digest its contents uh, and discuss it by the end of the year, but we'd at least like to have it in hand so that we can look at it during the weeks we're not meeting, uh, because we anticipate it's going to be fairly lengthy and contain numerous recommendations for our review. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, through you to the board and to Mr. Sullivan, we're very close. What we're trying to do at this time is set up an appointment or a meeting between myself, Ty and Bond, and the town administrator to discuss where we are. He's completed his task, and so we'll sit with Mr. Sullivan and review the task, and then once that's done, we'll submit it to the Board of Selectmen, and then we can set appointments as to reviewing this information. So I'm hoping to have that done within the week or early next week. Okay, good. So we're, we can we can hopefully have a completed document uh, before Christmas then. Yeah, did I see it? Was it the 16th or is that another project? One of the one of the 12 balls you're juggling right now. Yes, so. there's, there's a bunch of them. Another 12th is another meeting, but uh, in contact with Ty and Bond, we're trying to have that meeting with you the week of the 12th or the week of the 16th. I think that was the, the, the okay. window that we're looking at. So they'll correspond and get that meeting established, and then from there we can bring it forward. Thanks, Scott. Selectman Slavin. One other piece. We have a project, I think it's still hanging out there for the solar project on the grounds. Where are we status on that? Um, uh, it's a good question, Mr. Ch uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Selectman Slavin. Um, we have picked a respondent. Um, it is uh, uh, Nextra, uh, I think the largest energy company in the country, um, and they're really big on solar. They merged with Sunlight, I believe it was. Um, so we're having our first meeting, which will be the 16th, which is Monday, and we're meeting at 10.30. We're going to tour the plant, uh, and then we're going to start contract negotiations as to exactly how we're going to site this and uh, what the capacity is going to be. Uh, and at that time, we'll start getting into the nitty-gritty. Uh, the consultant will be talking with the uh, Department of Energy uh, as far as where we're going to be behind the meter, uh, next to the meter, or whatever that is, to make sure we comply with all the rules and regulations established for our uh, net metering uh, project. So uh, the 16th, we kicked that off. So okay. you're so more than welcome. Any member of the board, you're more than welcome to be there. It's uh, going to be at the plant at 1030, the 16th. It's going to be myself, uh, Mr. Menard, uh, Mr. Fahey, from Cadmus uh, Group Association um, uh, and, and any other member uh, of the committee that wants to be there. We're looking forward to it. We're excited. And so we're, we're still kicking and kicking hard. It's been a long process, but it's still there. So we're excited. We're real excited. Okay. Thank you for that update. Other questions on other business? Okay. Moving up or down the agenda. Next piece is the Bay Point flow increase. Uh, I see we have com some company tonight. 
Good evening, gentlemen. Yeah, this, this has to be, uh, you have to become very intimate with these microphones in order for the uh, audio to, to pick up properly okay, on the broadcast. Uh, again, my name is Tom Furtado with the Bay Point Club. This is Tom Principe of Principe Engineering, and we're here tonight to request a permit to increase our sewage flow by 37,950 gallons. Uh, we've discussed this with uh, Mr. Camp Director Campina, and it's to accommodate the future development of residential housing. Why don't... Uh you tell the board and the, the greater public at large out there uh, about your residential housing plans. We, we are presently in, um, within the process with the planning board. We've met with them for our pre-application conference uh, approximately 30 days ago. And at that point, they suggested that we proceed. And one of the first things that they recommended we do, which we did, is we met with uh, the director as well as Mr. Sullivan, and they suggested that we come before you as the sewer commissioners to, um, to apply for a permit for the increase in flow. Okay. Uh, why don't you describe uh, just briefly uh, the project itself okay. while you've got the, the floor here? Sure. Um, the project proposed uh, as of today is for 115 single-family residential homes on the, the land at the Bay Point at the Bay Point Club, formerly known as the Bay Point Country Club. Um, and it would be developed in several phases. And while we're in the process of doing all the engineering, the flow calculation comes out to 37,950 gallons per day. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, questions from the board? Yeah, I have a question. You, you want to go first? I can go. Okay. Um, uh, guy. Yes. All right, so how much flow do we have available in the plant at this point? Um, I had sent out a memo right at this second, uh, 137,000 gallons per day available, um, and that was based upon the report from um, uh, Woodward and Curran. There's a study. I attached the study to the memo mm -hmm. also that mm -hmm. it's very explicit about the 156,000 available gallons, and that's and based on actual flow, not loading. Loading can be more, but to answer your question directly uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, is 100 and 37,000 gallons. Okay, and how many gallons do we have committed of that 100 and some odd thousand well, gallons? Because we, uh, Board of Selectmen prior to this did commit to some commercial flow for this, right? Um, no, the 137,000 gallons. Originally, it was 156,000 gallons, the report said. Mm -hmm. We've committed 10,000 gallons per day to make peace uh, through their project of Rosebrook, but it's an additional 10,000. Mm -hmm. We've committed 9,000 gallons to Walmart, and that leaves us 137,000 gallons. Okay. What we have out there in the peripheral is the uh, request from Great Hill uh, home, Mobile Home Estates for 22,000 gallons per day. Last year, they were asked to do an impact study. They've begun, but they have not completed it. So it is, at this point, they haven't asked us to commit. They came in front of this board and said they'd like to, and we asked them to do some work. They're doing the work, or they, and they've stopped. So that those gallons are not committed. It's out there in the peripheral. And if we complete the projects that are on the board, that hypothetically, Agawam and so on, that we're going to be sewered at some point, well, how many gallons will we have left? Those gallons are already committed they're and already committed and they're in these numbers yes in those numbers we committed yeah, okay. uh, I'm gonna ask contract you. three we committed so it's in those numbers okay and also uh, any uh, I and I or infiltration inflow through those projects have been committed okay. all of Bourne's been committed all of the existing mobile homes have been committed so all those numbers if you look at report they're all committed so those gallons are out so that's when we say 137 gallons per day remaining that's including all those numbers that's what we physically have remaining right now okay and that includes Includes the increase that Bourne was going to ask us for. Didn't you tell us a few weeks ago that Bourne was going to ask us for an increase? Bourne is, has a 200,000 gallon limit. They're presently using about. But that's out of the mix. That's right. That's in the okay, mix fine. because that's right. within those 200,000 gallons that we've already committed to. Bourne. Okay, great. They're Thank just you. Not using them. All right, thanks. Okay. Okay. Selectman Whiteside. No, thank you. I was. Uh, I know that Mr. Tropiano was as asking the questions to get the information out to the public. Um, a very complete report. Thank you, Mr. Campino. Selectman so Slavin. We're still going to be working on the INI as far as the infiltration to get those numbers out of our mix. 
The other piece I'd like to see happen, if at all possible, is to continue working with CMAS on that project where potentially them basically taking from us up to a half a million gallons per day to cool their facility and stuff because that would basically give us another f more than about five years at least of growth before we have to worry about a second plant. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I agree with Selectman Saving. We are. We will definitely move forward on that. We've also capped off our sewer pipes. Our, uh, we had some catch basin issues reported by CDM. We've capped those. Estimated to be 130,000 gallons per day. We're going to actually, in this report, I was stating that we're going to actually see that play out because I want to see what the actual gallons of the plant in, you know, before we commit those gallons. But we are working on it, and I will continue to. Um, so I, I do agree with you, yes. And that number you talked about, that doesn't include what we, what we think we have at Swift Speech either? No, I, because I don't want to commit those numbers because we've already done one part of that and we've taken out 130,000 gallons per day per calculations of CDM. I'm not using those gallons at all. I'm just leaving them out there. I'm not adding them to our capacity no, until they prove out themselves because we've, we've done the, the repair of the four catch basins. And so we're monitoring our daily flow. We're going to do a rolling two-year daily flow to make sure that those gallons become accounted for. So I just don't want to say, hey, we have them. And, and because when you start calculating I&I, &I, even though there is a scientific approach, it can be unscientific as to actual gallons. Is it is it three to one, five to one, four to one? And so we're not so sure. So I want to be sure before I bring those gallons back in and commit them. So but again, we're looking at a potential of a quarter of a million gallons a day. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're also, directly to you, we're also waiting for a plan. We're working on now. You'll have the conceptual about redoing Swiss Beach in its entirety to gain a lot of I&I &I because everything is 15 feet down. We have old pipes, and so we know we're getting a bunch of I&I &I that's included in those numbers hard to isolate. So that's going to be a long-term plan also. So we're going to present that very shortly. The engineer presented it to me last week. I'll present that to the body, and you can look at that, and, and, and the board, and you guys can go from there. So we're very conscientious of that. Thank you. Selectman Chopiano. That was actually my question. Is a Swiss Beach issue, which we know is a huge issue with I and I. I mean, we've known this from day one, by the way. Since uh, I mean, as long as I've been around here, <laughs> and it's been a few years, you know. But uh, we we really uh, we really have to get a handle on that. And I think I know you've done some work on that, and I know that that's a good thing. So we're working on. It. Thank you very much, and you're absolutely correct. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, Selectman Whiteside? Um. You, the gentleman, you gentlemen came in with a piece of board. cardboard rendering? Yes. That, that's a preliminary rendering of, of the residential development. Would it be? Yeah, you brought it with you. Within order well take to a look at ask it, you to display sure. it, please. Absolutely. You can do anything you want. A little pre construction <laughs> advertising. <laughs> well, I think it's important for people to know what's on the drawing board. Planning board. And uh, again, we are in the process of doing the engineering and architectural work to go ahead with the second step, uh, which would be the preliminary application to the planning board. Um, Where are the condos now? Those are up there. Up there, yeah, around yeah. that hole right there, number eight, huh? Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's, mm. it's number seven. There. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's out in the little thing you got to shoot over the water yeah. there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's kind of a fun it's hole, it's actually. And they're all going to be serviced on that same road coming out? Yeah, today they're mm -hmm. going this road coming here. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's approximately a third of an existing roadway. And then these would, this would be new interior roads. Interior, but they'll all come out the same place. Yes. Right. Yeah. Wow. And that totals 115? 115. 115. What is the zoning there? The v zoning overlay? The zoning overlay, just you know, was done by the planning board back a couple of years ago where we took any property of 100 contiguous, 100 contiguous acres that had an 18-hole golf course and we made some changes to the zoning to allow residential and mixed-use development. Thank you. Yeah, those lots are small, mm -hmm. yeah. obviously. This will, just so everybody understands, that the average price of three to $400,000. Mr. Sullivan, what do we expect the increase for our tax base for? Are you not 
picking up. Could be up to 400,000 to half a million, depending on where we're at that time. So I love these guys. <laughs> well, Can I let's not let's not love them too much here because all of the factors don't always work out that way. For one time, when they built the condos, they were selling them for two hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and when they ended up finally selling them, somebody went. Some of them went for like sixty and seventy thousand dollars because of the crash that took place in between. And not only that, but there could be school children and other things that come to these things, and that adds to your cost. So you can't really just say that this is a gravy train. You know, you got to kind of think of it a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's always a plus. It adds to the tax base, adds to the levy, the whole thing. But it's still you got to think about it a little more carefully than that. Yeah, yeah I think the, that what the interesting part is when we're ready, because they're just asking for flow. They'll give their full explanation to everything which i yeah. think will make this board and uh, members of this community very happy they're geared to a different market than the regular normal market as well select on white side yeah i'm sorry um can you answer through that mic so that they okay yeah. sir yeah, yeah thank you um <laughs> presuming that everything goes the way that you hope that it goes what is your target shovel date and your target first um segment date well we as i said earlier we are in we have started the process with the planning board which is the required approval process mm -hmm. we will move through as quickly as possible and as quickly as can be done through the planning board um, that's going to require engineering architectural work which is well underway uh, we hope to be in front of the planning board first part of the year for the preliminary application assuming that that goes successfully we will then meet whatever requirements that they put on us for the uh, definitive or final plan mm -hmm. and um, and adhere to those and essentially immediately upon approval from the town we will go ahead and uh, and begin the process of construction and development and um, the these ones down here the 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 less than 30 <laughs> um, are you putting in an approved road that would be town accepted or is that going to be a private development that um, we will be engineering and developing and building the roads per the town requirements. We had a meeting with all of the town um, department heads, including DPW. So we will absolutely, Mr. Principe will be doing the engineering on the civil side of things. He will absolutely design and we will build to town specifications. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Uh, now I guess we turn our attention to uh, Director Campino, once more, uh, we're in possession of your memorandum on this. Uh, you suggest that if uh, we do grant this request, that uh, the permit be uh, granted conditionally until, quote, an acceptable mitigation impact plan approved by the sewer commissioners is in place. You've obviously discussed that with these gentlemen. Yes, sir. They're aware that this is what you're seeking us to do tonight. Absolutely, and I gave him some idea what we're looking for. It's a complete impact study of all the infrastructure, pump stations that go the, from the South Water would be the first impacted pump station to be determined by their study. Then from there it would be Onset Pier, and then it would be Lopes Field, and all the piping and manholes in between because we traverse some marshes and some wetland, and so that's going to be part of their requirement to study all that, the flow, how that affects us, and any mitigation that needs to take place to to lessen or to eliminate any impact of the town that they'll pick up the cost and make those make those necessary mitigations and then the plan will be proposed they'll draw it up we'll submit it for review by the board of selectmen study it and then make the decision based upon that mitigation plan okay just so people understand what we're approving here would be approving here tonight would be a conditional permit followed by the submittal of a, a mitigation plan uh, for us to review and then subsequently a, a final permit vote uh, based upon the mitigation plan. So it's a three-step three, three step process is what we're looking at here. So I just want to make sure people understand that. Mr. Uh, Chairman, not to interrupt, and I apologize, but I, again, this will be attached to the planning board. So they're going to have uh, conditions, so we'll make sure that they get attached to their conditions so it'll be a binding on all. So that I, I think I just yeah. want the public to understand that, that it's going to be a binding mitigation plan. Our planning board's pretty thorough, as I'm sure you've already found out, and yes. uh, Selectman Slavin is religious about attending the meeting, so he knows exactly what's going on there. Uh, is there anything else from the board for these gentlemen? No, if you'd like, I'll make a motion to yes. uh, request a conditional permit until an acceptable mitigation impact plan approved by the sewer commissioners is in place. Second. For a Bay Point project. 
Motion made by Selectman Slavin, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Good luck with the planning board. Thank you, gentlemen. So we have roughly a hundred thousand gallons right now. Of mm. We have roughly a hundred thousand gallons. Left. One more slow. Oh, no. And we've got one more item for Mr. Next up tonight. is a so user omitted commitment. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, to the board through you. Um, th we're requesting a, a um, omitted commitment to Mr. Foster to collect. And what it is is pretty much all um, uh, accounts that are less than full, which is the full six months, anything less. Uh, we're billing those folks now. If they had tied in in the middle of the six-month period between February 1st and July uh, 31st, then that's included in this number. It's 153.88 EDUs and 119 accounts created that are omitted that we're now going to bill. And it comes out to a total of $28,696.43. Why were they board. admitted? Why were they omitted? Well, when we do the first set of billing, we do the full billing cycle. So as an example, we're in the middle of some contracts contract one, contract two. Mm -hmm. So the billing cycle is February to July. So you tie in in June. So what we do is we bill all those folks that are full billing the six months. That's the way the computer set up the VADAR system. Then we got to go in by hand, create the accounts uh, that are partial, a month, two months, or whatever they may be. And that's what this number represents. It's for the first half. And it represents a pretty good chunk of money. Yes, $28,000. We billed $2 million on the committed, the, the original commitment, and this is the third, this is $28,000 of those postures. But why wouldn't these get billed, like, right away? Why wouldn't we, when we can somebody up, why wouldn't we be creating bills for, for them immediately? It's in the program, and that's a good question, uh, uh, Selectman Trapiano, but it's, we have a VADA program that does the billing, and the billing does it in whole sections. We've got to manipulate that. So once it's out, then we can manipulate it to get the partials. So we do always, it's, we do it in two segments. We're talking to VADA about maybe entering them, and then the computer recognizes the partial. Right now it doesn't. So if I put these in there, they're going to get billed for a full cycle. Well, they've got to figure out a way. I mean, that, yeah, this, sure this is can. silly. I mean. Yes, we, we, I agree with you. We're, we're asking them, and we're hoping to get some results. But it's, it's okay. something that we definitely look into doing in the long run. All right. Thank you. Selectman Slavin. I'm hoping Ty and Bond has some answer for this piece. I, I, I'm with you. I, I think uh, once we get some good answers, we, we'll probably look at revamping the entire billing cycle anyways, the billing process. So. I'll make a motion to go ahead and uh, for the half of omitted commitments for fiscal 14 to use the fees in the amount of $28,696.43. Second. Motion made by Selectman Slavin, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. Anything else on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 4 zero, zero. These tie-in bond folks sound like they're going to be our sewer saviors. That's just an observation. I, I, I don't know if they can be saviors or not, but one thing I can say is they're really being thorough. And so whatever we decide to do, we're going to do it based upon a really good educational uh, uh, principle. So yeah. I'm looking forward to we it. We, we are as well. You know. Anything else for uh, Director Campina tonight? Mm -hmm. I'm good. We're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Spending part of your evening it. with us. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Town Business 2013 Renewal Certification. ones I have here, these are for a local licensing fee for ABCC. It doesn't, it's not really a very specific agenda item, 2013 renewer certification for what? For what, yeah. It says must be signed by local licensing authority form 43 ABCC But does it say that on the agenda? No, it does not. And 
the temporary increased resident population should actually be underneath that, shouldn't it? Isn't that what we're at being asked to sign? Yes. Yes, exactly. I'm sorry. It, that's the renewal certification is A, and the, the temporary increased resident population is Here B, but neither one of them rec yeah. recites the fact that it's having to do... One's buried behind the other. This is from the uh, Department of State Treasurer, Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission. Your attention is directed to Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 17, which provides that an estimate of the temporary increased resident population shall be made prior to March 1st in any year. This population estimate is used to establish a quota of seasonal packaged goods stores licensed under Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 15, and closes a form to be used for this purpose. Please return it by March 31st, 2014. I understand that, Mr. Slavin, but it doesn't have that. that we're, it well, it's not the most exact description on the agenda, but I... Can we put it off for a week? If you're uncomfortable voting I on it, as, as presently voting, stated, then yes. we can do that. Yeah, we'll do that then. I think if anybody looked at the agenda, they'd have no clue what we were yeah, talking about. Yeah, nothing. Not no idea at all. I think she's right about that. Yeah. Because they it, wouldn't know we were dealing with liquor. Yeah. My question is, does anybody have this in their packet as well, though? I, I, I have I this. I do have the... I uh, have it in mine. Yes. I have it, but it's, it, it, it's on the agenda. It is not okay. clear. It's not in my packet. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it is. But it looks like this. Yeah, I guess, yeah it is. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah, no, it's in the packets. Well, hang on to it for next week. It'll appear again with uh, more descriptive language. Yeah, it's very... Uh, not much here either. All right. Okay, so you want to pass on the renewal Yeah, we'll pass on A well? and B because they're both the same thing. Okay, we're going to resubmit for next week? Yes. Oh boy, here we go. No, we're going to hold that off. Are we? Yeah, we're going to hold off on the town committees because I think Angie Dunham was uh, put a request into the office to see if we could do this later on the agenda. Okay. Why don't we skip down to item D? D. Vote to authorize the plowing of private ways to appear on the April 1st, 2014 election ballot. Yeah, it's actually in here. The uh the article, the thing to put on the ballot, right? Right here. Shall the town vote? Shall the town away and accept the I'll read what the actual uh, motion is and then we can discuss it. Shall the town of Wareham vote to accept the provisions of Section 6C of Chapter 40 of the General Laws, Tribunal, General Laws, Massachusetts, which authorizes cities and towns to appropriate money for the removal of snow and ice from private ways there and open to public use? Yes or no? I have a question. question. Yes. A question for counsel. So Attorney Bowen. Could you look at this, please, sir? Can you tell me whether the lack of capitalization affects what we would be voting on or the apparent inconsistency with the way that I'm used to reading those, please. And I'm not being critical of anyone when I ask that question. I'm just trying to make sure that the work that the individuals have gone through um, is in fact put before the voters. Uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, this is exactly the way it's written up in the statute. Okay. And the, uh, and it's also exactly the way it's written up in the citizen's petition. Mm -hmm. So uh, when the way the statute is written is we accept that statutory language. And when I saw this, I puzzled over it as well because I believe that the statute even has a grammatical error in it, which I wanted to fix. And so I had to go back and read the statute. And when I read it, I said, aha, that's the way they wrote it. So that's the way we've got it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now that we've heard from our resident grammarians, anything else on this? <laughs> I just want to say, I want to um, say thank you to Ms. Romney and the individuals, thank you so much, um, who so got this when you have a teacher, right? before us. Well, I'm sorry. You know. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, and I guess I would make a motion to place. I think I just, I think I did yeah, Alan just okay. did. We just oh, need you a just second. Then I second We it. need a second. Yep. 
Motion made by Selectman Slavin, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? 400. It's on the ballot for the spring. I will uh, send a note to the clerk uh, informing her of this vote as well. Thank you. I've got a common VIC license here also. I don't see it on the ballot of I, on the agenda. Has anybody noticed that? Uh, a common VIC license? Oh. Yeah, for subway. Yes, oh, yeah. it's on the it's, tr it's on A. The Excuse me, sir. It's 6A. Okay. Above oh, yeah. the license. Fine. Let's take care of that one. Get that out of the way. Okay. They're not here, I don't believe. Make a motion that we approve for the DIVYA. I'm not going to pronounce it. JYOIT Corp. Doing business as Subway, 2890 Cranbrook <laughs> Highway, Wareham, Mass. Is hereby granted a common VIC license. This permit is granted in conformity with statutes and therefore expires December 31st, 2013. Yeah, the guy died, it looks like. Yeah, there was a change. You've reviewed the information there? Yeah. And it's in conformity with the law? Yes, it is. Move. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, 4 zero, zero. Sneak in there. Huh? Okay, D is done. Continue discussion on possible vote on fees. Well, this is your baby. Selectman Whiteside. Um, for the record, Mr. Holmes was asked whether he had an objection to us voting um, increases in fees during his absence, and he said no. So um, he sent me a text earlier afternoon, uh, this afternoon, reiterating that. Okay. You have had before you for a month or so um, something that looks like this, which compares our um, year-round alcoholic seasonal um, licenses and the things that I have um, in check marks are the ones that I would like to discuss for the record the al all alcohol the alcohol all of the alcoholic licenses would be effective January 2nd because everything that we are going to be doing today has to be done before December 30th um, and they've already paid their fees because they're, they're due before that time so um, in the information that I gave you um, I gave you the high in the Plymouth County the low and the average um, and I think that in some cases we probably should increase our fees um, and I think that we need to clarify some of the language, which I believe I pulled this off our website. So, for instance, um, the Club L All Alcohol, we currently charge 1200 the low is 550 and the high is 2000 Um I'm guessing that a 1500 would be an appropriate fee. Uh, there was no average because of the, the numbers that were skewed. Um, I would recommend the Common Vic All Alcoholic stay at the same, um, the high is 2500 and the low is 900. Um, the Wines and Malt, I would go to f um, 1500. The inholder all alcoholic, I would leave it the same at the 1650. The package goods store all alcoholic, I would leave at the 2100. The package goods store wines and malt, I would go up to 1500. Where it says 
Veterans Club All Alcoholic. I th suggest we add in there also that it may be nonprofits because I think one of the things we gave that we have in front of us is a not just a veterans club, um, it's also an, a nonprofit. Uh, just, I don't yep. mean to interrupt, but mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, perhaps combining classifications, I'm thinking perhaps we should ask council whether that uh, in turn would require some kind of change to the liquor regulations we adopted within the past year. I, I don't think I can answer it off the top. Yeah. Okay, so, so then um, we can hold that. Um, the package goods store all alcoholic, which is a um, seasonal, I would recommend, you have to go down to underneath my little bracket there where it says not listed, we'll research further. I would recommend that that go up to $1,200. Um, the liquor license changes and transfers, I would increase although we're really high. I guess I wouldn't increase that one. That's terrible. No, it's great. Um, the, and so can we deal with the alcohol licenses first and then we'll go on to the um, cars stuff? Certainly. Uh, I guess what maybe the, the process here should be, uh, you make the motion, we get a second uh, and uh, either vote or if the second uh, is for discussion, perhaps. Well, I'll ask if there's any questions, so, on each one. So if you want to start off with uh, your first proposed. I just read them all. Do you want me to read them again? I think it would behoove us to do individual motions for each one. Just so that it's very clear on the record and very easy for the office to transcribe these and to get them into our fee structure. Okay. You know, I, I know everybody's searching for money and looking for money and trying to find ways to come up with money. But when we add money to licenses, it's like adding a tax. When we add this to licenses, they pass it on to their customers. They don't pay the money. They pass it on. Whatever it is, it goes on. And, I, you know, this is not the best time, as far as I'm concerned, to raise fees and taxes and all kinds of things on people in general. I mean, if we want to put a package together and go to the people and say, look, this is what we need to run your town, and they know what it's all about, and they understand what we put forward, and they say, yes, okay, we're willing to buy into that, and that that's something we can handle, then that's okay with me, because that's what they decided. But I'm just, I'm sorry, but I'm just, this, we, we did it at town meeting, we hit them with some more regulation and some more stuff in order to put more cost and more expense on the businesses that are taxing more and more people. The costs keep rising, I don't know about you, but the paychecks haven't changed. They keep getting smaller. And you go to buy something in the store and more fee, more regulation, and guess what? The price goes up and we keep paying more and more and we're just in this catch-22 we just keep going around in circles and I understand that the town needs money to operate but why don't we go to the people and tell them honestly what we need and what we have to do like I've been saying all along and then maybe we can get them to agree with what we can do and what we should do I'm gonna vote against all of these fee increases fair enough uh, select my white side, why don't you uh, make a motion on each one of these? Okay. Attorney Bowen. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I took the opportunity to take a look at the license regulations, and there doesn't seem to be any conflict regarding nonprofit, fraternal, and so forth. So I don't believe any adjustment to your regulations would be required. Okay, thank you for thank finding you. that out in uh, record time. Nice job. <laughs> He's quick, isn't he? He is. <laughs> Didn't I just recommend only three increases? Am I crazy? I, I, I'm just telling you, I'm not voting for three increases. I understand that, but I'm. So I don't care if you voted for one. 
I'm recommending them. Okay. Um, are you ready? Yes. Okay. The club al all alcoholic license I would go to from twelve hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside. Second. And they would be effective January second, two thousand fourteen. So they do not impact any of the licenses in that box. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Slavin. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yay. Abstain. Three one zero. Um, do we need to vote if there isn't a change? No. 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 Okay. The next one that I recommend is the Common Vic Wine and Malt, going to fifteen hundred dollars from twelve hundred fifty dollars. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Slavin. Anything else on the question? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. No. Abstain? Three, one, zero. And the third change would be the package goods store wines and malt from 1,100 to 1,500. Second. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside and seconded by Selectman Slavin. Anything else on the question? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Yep. 310. The next class of licenses. Uh, do you want to uh, change the Veterans Club All Alcoholic to Nonprofit Club All, All Alcoholic? That was what we were just checking with Attorney Bowen. Do you want to make that change now while we've got the... Yes, uh, I think that's, uh, it, it's... Freeze and descriptors in front of us? Yeah, I think it's a... To my grammatical way of looking at it, it's a more um, inclusive opportunity for a license. Uh. So I would ask that that category, which is currently listed as Veterans Club All Alcoholic, be changed the fee is not being changed but that would be to to veterans club or and or nonprofit organization all alcoholic okay motion made by selectman whiteside Second. seconded by selectman slavin all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed abstain we got an aye vote out of selectman tropiano 400 zero. you know it's no tax spending anybody's money okay <laughs> So um, now we go down to, um, let's do the bottom one, which is hawkers and peddlers. Well, we have it listed as transient vendors. Um, most people, most other towns in Plymouth County call it hawkers and peddlers. Um, and I just would like a change in nomenclature because I think that transient vendors, I mean, that means somebody who's driving through, you're not going to let me do that one. <laughs> uh, with, your, with your permission, yes. Mr. Chairman, there, uh, this, this is really esoteric stuff, mm. so of course I know it. Um, the, uh, there are actually two different types of licenses, mm. hawkers and peddlers and transient vendors. <laughs> Counterintuitively, the statute defines a transient vendor as someone who sets up a tent or exhibition space for a period of less than a year. That sounds kind of non-transient to me, but that's the way it's defined. Whereas a hawker and peddler is someone who is passing through town. Mm -hmm. So go figure, I guess. But uh, those are two different types of licenses, and I would keep them both on the books with fees attached. We do not have both on the books at the moment. I'd add them in. Fine. I then would recommend that um, the category of transient vendors remain at $100, which is um, the high, um, the average is $7. But I would, all, I would like to add a category called hawkers and peddlers, and that would be $100. Second. Uh, just briefly, uh, and this is for town council again, is there any need to recite to a portion of a statute in order to properly define that, or is the common law usage good enough uh, for the fee structure of the town of Wareham? 
Uh, if, if memory serves, uh, Mr. Chairman, it's defined both in the statute, and I think that if you want to call it common law, our reference to it is probably good enough. And I, I also think that there's a definition in our bylaws of one or the other and possibly both. So I, I'm you, sure we have it covered. So you think we're on pretty firm ground here? Yes, Okay, sir. just wanted to check. Uh, motion made by Selectman Whiteside. Very seconded. Seconded by Selectman Slavin. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed abstain, 4-0-0. Zero, zero. The next one I'd like to discuss would be the taxi cab town rules slash regulations, which is the fourth one up from the bottom. We have, at least according to the records I look at, 12 taxi cabs. Some towns um, charge per driver for cabs. Some, some towns license the vehicle only, and some towns Both. license the vehicle and the driver. Um, Boston. Boston, right. Um, in Boston, a medallion is worth a lot of money. Like and the drivers buy hackney licenses. Right, okay. Um, so I am simply ask, I, I guess I would recommend that we be more specific in our regulation because we've registered, we do it by the number of taxis as opposed, I think we need to be specific in which way we do it. The grammar, again, <laughs> the English teacher again. Anything to Mrs. Whiteside's point? Mr. Tropiano is probably the one. Um, it, it, it depends on how we want to do it. If you want to license the drivers, uh, it's quite common. The reason why Boston does that, Boston, Cambridge, all the bigger places do it. The reason why they do that is because they do background checks on the drivers and things of that nature so they know who's in the cabs. And they have rules and regulations for the drivers in order to how they have to perform, what they, how nice they have to be to the customers, you know, uh, you know that kind of stuff, uh, you know, which in a city that has um, 1,800 cabs running around all the time in Boston, every shift, 1,800 cabs running around, that's huge. And so there's a lot of drivers out there. And they, of course, they worry about their backgrounds and, you know, things of that nature. And I guess that's appropriate. Uh, we have 12. I don't know. If one of these is not like the others. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, one is not like the other. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want to do the, go to that level, then you have to go to that level. If you don't, if you just want to license the cab and do the background check on the guy who gets the cab, then you should be okay. You know what I'm saying? Because he's probably driving his own cab anyway. Thank you, Mr. Treviano. So it's up to you. You guys decide what you'd like to do. I think we should just keep it as cabs and let the cab driver, who's probably the guy who's driving it anyway, 99.9% .9 of the time. So it would remain as taxi cab? Correct. Okay. Th I, I think that would that's very good clarification. Thank you. Okay. Here we go on to um, class one, two, and three licenses for cars, car dealerships. Um, we charge $150 for the class one, the class two, and the class three. <coughs> the high in the county is 250, 200, and 200, and the low is um, $50 a piece. What I suggest we adopt is what is indicated um, under the Rockland class one, two, and three tiered um, charge that for zero to 21 cars for class one, two, or three, it would be $250. For 22 through 99 cars, it would be $500. 100 to 199 cars would be $750. 200 to 300 cars, 1,000. And 300 plus cars, $1,500. Now, of course, to your comment, we don't have um, the auto mile running through our town, okay? Um, so in some towns, there's, there are several towns that have this tiered way of doing it. Um, 
with the number of cars on the lots. And I think it's uh, an opportunity. I know that selling cars is tough and all that other stuff. Anyway, I'll no, be I, I, my, my other My bigger problem with this is that now we have to have somebody go out and count cars to make sure that we're getting the right amount of money for the license unless every single license has a car number on it. And then who is going to maintain it and make sure that they keep only that number of cars on there? And it just adds a, a layer of bureaucracy that's nothing but a problem. I invited myself to the table. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> you can do that. Well, thank you. Uh, I don't know what we have right now on class one, two, and three licenses. I don't know whether we impose vehicle limits on the licenses. Some currently. we do. So based on lot size. Sometimes. Yeah. So you'd you'd have to go back to, to from an enforcement perspective because I've dealt with this in a lot of communities. From an enforcement perspective, you would have to, for each license, specify the, the maximum number of cars allowed on the premises at any one time, you know, and just pick the number 40, and, and uh, I, I don't recollect the number that Selectman Whiteside had proposed per vehicle, but. Uh, 40 it, would be $500. Yeah, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be like five bucks a car, it would be just some number. So you'd have to go back through all of your licenses, vote in specific numbers, and then once you did that, allocate a license fee uh, for each particular license. And also, uh, there is an, inf this I realize this is a policy issue, but I'll throw it out there, there is an enforcement issue. You would need somebody to go down periodically and inspect that the places were keeping the, not going over the limit, and that can be a problem. It's actually a good problem for a business, but it's not a good problem for you to keep up on it. Uh, and then also uh, on class three licenses, uh, in that case you're dealing not with stock and trade, but you're dealing junk with junk cars. cars that they're disassembling and selling for parts. You know, it's kind of like uh, for those of us of a certain generation, Goldie Salvage and Walpole. You needed a part for something. You went to Goldie's with your wrench. You wrenched it off and you paid for it. Let's we'll use Robertson's because we have him right here in town. Oh, and well, he's a dismantler. Okay. Let's well, give an advertisement to our own folks here. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> by all means, uh, I'll go with Roberts, especially if they're going to take it off for me rather than have me take it off myself. Yeah, we like to advertise our own people. And so <laughs> I'm all for it. So, you know, the, the per vehicle limit really wouldn't, wouldn't work with them because at a certain point, when you haul a vehicle in, it might be a vehicle, but six months later, it's a bunch of parts. Well, yeah, in, so in an hour, it's a some bunch of parts. I mean, so if it's a great, well sought after car. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's my. Yeah, it's problematic because they put thousands of cars through there in a year. So. In class three. Class three. Mm. Would you be willing to uh, take a little? further look into this and come back to it based upon Attorney Bowen's recommendations? Yes, and also, um, yeah, that's fine. I, and I understand your question about the um, enforcement. It seems to me, however, that the breakdown that they have, I mean, you know, 20 cars doesn't look like 100 cars. It, you know, they're pretty clear sight line delineations in, in the way that this town, ha this, that Rockland does it. So, yes, I'd be happy to put it back on the agenda for next week. Yeah, you really have to look into the class threes, though, because what happens with class threes, if you take a class three, you say, well, the number of cars. Well, Robertson's, for instance, might do, I don't know, thousands of cars. It's only going to have 300 plus. Okay. So, so, so 300 plus, that's his fee for the year. Okay, but a smaller dismantler might, maybe he does 300 cars. So maybe he does 150 cars. I don't know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? To based on it. Now, we only have one class three license in this town, right? That's what I, I remember correctly. There's only one. It's Robertson's. That's one. So the only one, right? Yeah, I think so. I guess it's easy enough to deal with one. Yeah. I, I'd be happy to bring it back next okay, week. Yeah, we'll come back to it later. Thank right. you. Thanks. Going up the list still? No. Um, believe it or not, I was waiting to get this one done before I moved forward on the others. If you so choose me to continue this. I know that Mr. Tropiano doesn't want to. Oh, we can keep it on the agenda for a little, <laughs> little while longer. <laughs> we can come back to it. I'd like the um, the class one, two, and three on next week's agenda, please. And I'll work on the other stuff. Thank you. 
Okay, maybe we should, I think we've got everybody here from the committees who's gonna come. Maybe we can go back to uh, 8C. When does open space anticipate the member? Shortly. Are you doing one at a time or all of us together? It would be all together. There's a, I have a, it would be all together, ma'am. So I don't mind waiting. Us up there? Let's go to the liquor licenses or whatever. Thank you. Well, we still have updates on the master plan committee and no. discussion on possible voting policy in 8-1. It's like a pretty full agenda. I know, but let's if we get if we start with these, we can at least yeah. Start I'm, I'm okay minutes. with those. We can do them. We could have done them an hour ago. I know. As far as I'm concerned. So why don't we clear up? Yeah. Mr. Chair, we're here. <laughs> oh boy. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. <laughs> Glad you caught us before yeah. we got a rolling. Cause, I know. Uh, yeah, that yeah, might have been an hour mind. later. <laughs> All right. Well, with that in mind, we've got item 8C on the agenda. This is continued discussion on condensing town committees. So would the committee folks uh, come forward and... Do we have enough chairs? Sure. Yeah, come on up. Bring a chair. <laughs> just remember to speak into the mic so Mr. White Yeah, you'll have to pass the microphones around and you have to just... For my example, you can see you've got to get really close to them. Marine resources, too. Oh, yeah. No hiding. Sorry, guys. <laughs> as long Come as on down. As long as you brought food, we're fine. Okay, take it away. Okay. Not um, not good at all. <laughs> I have prepared for the um, Board of Selectmen, and I don't think you guys, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me, got a copy of what I have in front of me, but um, I'll try and be very specific about what I'm talking about, and then uh, certainly we will get you copies of it. Um, for several months, some of us have thought that um, we have some boards and commissions who exist on paper, but they don't exist because they haven't met for two years or three years. We have some boards and commissions who operate um, on things that, or who, who consider things that in some people's opinions may or may not be overlapping. We also have um, s at least one commission uh, committee on my list today that was authorized and no one was ever appointed, or I guess there was some people appointed, but there's never been a meeting. So um, before us tonight, I have a, looks like this, okay? Um, and it has fields and grounds, mine at forest, marine resources, open space, bike path, and trash committee. The reason I put those together was that in con um, conversation with Mr. Slavin and others, it seemed to me that we could um, possibly create something called a, nat a commission on natural resources. And of course, this is all just for discussion. Um, let me, because you don't all have it, I'll read it. Attached to this um, narrative, you will find a table giving information for six boards or commissions that may better serve the public need under a consolidated format. This statement is not meant as a criticism of any citizen who has joined a board or a commission and has discharged his duties or hers. There are six bodies listed with the date of formation as well as the creating body. Further columns indicate how many members are authorized as well as how many are serving today. There is also a column of number of meetings held during 2013, the calendar 2013 from January 1st, as well as those held in calendar 2012. The time, places, and meeting dates are also noted, as are the person or board to whom the committee or the commission reports. Between these six committees, there are authorized 40 members and or associates. There are, at the moment, 18 people serving in these positions, one of them an associate. 
It is important to notice that the Fields and Grounds Committee gave a report to the superintendent and town administrator in October of 2010 under the article for the town meeting it had discharged its responsibility. Unfortunately, it is only recently that that report was forwarded to other interested boards and commissions as well as residents via the town website and um, flash drives. One committee, although constituted, never had a meeting nor an agenda. It is clear from reviewing the records, which I did not only on the website, but by going through the records in um, the town clerk's office, that many boards and commissions have trouble getting a quorum and therefore having a meeting. The consolidation of these entities into one commission of natural resources, or whatever you want to call it, with possibly 11 members could provide several benefits. There would be a clear mission statement for the commission, and that would be something that we would, if this board chooses to try and pursue this, that we would certainly welcome input. There would rarely be a quorum problem because six is a quorum of 11. These different boards and commissions can merge their historical knowledge and data to provide citizens one commission that can hear their concerns, report and consolidate their input, and recommend plans to the appropriate bodies, whether it be town meeting, board of selectmen, town administrator, or whoever. The commission could create its own subcommittees to parcel out special projects, ensuring that interested members would be working on and bringing forth these projects for action as appropriate. We hope to re-engage and re-energize citizen input. One of the aims is also to help the town focus and prioritize the issues and opportunities facing it. It also has the benefit of consolidating funding requests. Um, I actually think that we should include the Westfield study to this, but I have not had the time to um, research that. So if you go back to the front page, um, Fields and Grounds was created by Article 37 in the 1995 town meeting. Um, according to the town, according to the selectmen's records, um, there are seven members, but none of them have met since not, there were no meetings in 2013 none in 2012, and I think there was only one after the report was given to the town administrator and the superintendent of schools on October of 2010. That report was actually given to this board. Um, the committee was supposed to, under its charge, give that report to the town administrator and the superintendent, and therefore it has, in fact, concluded what it should have been done, doing. The Minot Forest Committee is a committee which was um, created in the town meeting of 1951, Article 39. There are to be supposed to be five members, and there are three today. Um, in 2013, they have had four meetings to date, according to the town clerk's records, and they had eight in 2012. The Marine Resources Commission was created by Article 18 of the town meeting in 1977 and then reformatted in the town meeting of 1998. It's supposed to have five members plus two associates. It has two members and one associate. In 2013, it has had two meetings, although I'm not sure that they both actually were meetings. Um, and in 2012, there were six meetings. The R Marine Resource Commission has a large um, plan that it needs to get members to work on or citizens to work on. The Open Space Committee was created by the Board of Selectmen in June of 1987 which was a reactivation of a town meeting vote from 1986. There are supposed to be seven members. There are actually six. 
in 2013. They had four meetings. In 2012, they have had one. Um, they had a major report that was given to the town in 2010. 2010. The Bike Path Committee was created by the Board of Selectmen on August 2nd, 2005. It's supposed to have seven members. There were five. They had five meetings in 2013 and six in 2012. Remember that those are calendar years. The Trash Committee was um, created on July 24th, 2012 at a Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, there are supposedly seven, it should have seven members, supposedly there are four members. However, there have never been any meetings posted or attended. So the other thing that these numbers don't tell you is that there are lots of people who um, who are really trying to get some business done in this town, and I see several of you in front of us. Um, and this is meant to be, I guess, a dialogue in some respect, but certainly a dialogue with my board members, that I believe that this is a step forward for the town in, in capturing the people who are willing to do the time um, and the energy and the effort and putting them on one ma major committee, which could have subcommittees to deal with whatever issues. I like projects. <laughs> You've taken on quite a one. Uh, comments from the board first I, and then. And I just want to tell you that what I did was I went to um, the town, I went to the board of selectmen information book. I went to the town clerk's office um, and copied information from the town meetings and I also went through the um, minutes drawers for each board and commission. So if they're not with the town clerk, they're not sorry, they're not, they don't exist. Selectman Tropiano. Okay. Um, Actually, um, in looking over this and trying to pool resources to do multitasking, I, I, it doesn't seem like such a bad idea on paper. But what's important is to hear from the committee people and what they think and whether they even think they can handle this kind of task. Because now you would be, if you're on resource, marine resources, you'd also be dealing with fields and grounds and bike path and all that kind of stuff. And there's, it's, it's quite a, a different undertaking. And it may not be what you guys bought into either. So, I mean, I think we need to hear from them, <laughs> really. But I think we should hear from our members first. Yeah, we will certainly. We didn't bring them up here to just look at us, that's for sure. Uh, Selectman Slavin. Uh, this is something that I put together originally back some months ago to discuss because we were having issues with with quorums, uh, we have a, a small core of people that are constantly working multiple committees. Uh, it's very difficult. You know, Marine Resources has been sitting there for months and months with a major project, which is to update our harbor management plan and stuff, which we were the first town to do it, actually, which I think was back in 95 or so. And um, you're supposed to really redo it like every 10 years. You, know, you don't have to. It's just something that's done. and. We were a leader in this particular piece, and there's a lot of work's been done. I used to be on that committee years ago, and we actually had a harbor management authority piece of it as well as a possibility. Uh, they've been unable to move forward at all because they don't even have a quorum. Uh, and they're just, you know, I hear at home, obviously, no, no quorum, no meeting this week. And it, it happens more and more. We have it with the Conservation Commission, with other committees as well. Um, it's hard. People are having to work. They don't have the time they used to have. Uh, the economy is such that it's really wreaking havoc with everybody. The idea of this was to take, and I use the word natural resources, to take committees that had overlap, put them into one mix, and have a core. You could have you know, alternates or you could have subcommittees, and the idea was to get things done and be more rewarding. It's extremely frustrating to go to a meeting and, just, and not have a meeting. Uh, and uh, again, you know, it's, just, it's an idea. 
it has potential. I still think we have some issues with our charter and bylaws to, to get through in order to do this as well. I don't think it's just simply we just, okay, we're going to take a pen and we're all wiped out and we're going to start from scratch. It's, it's not that simple. But I think it's something that's worthwhile. And if you have a, a condensed people, 11 people that know they can spend the time and do it, it's not really hard because you'll have people with different pieces that can, you know, basically head man the project and then come back to the committee. And it might be easy that one. But it's just, it's a thought. We're trying to fix what we know is an issue and we're trying to help the committees. This isn't something saying, you guys have done a terrible job, we're going to throw you all out. Just the opposite. We're trying to find a way to make it work for you. And that's my thought. This, this is a tough question. Uh, I, I certainly appreciate the work that uh, Selectman Slave and Selectman Whiteside have done putting this together and, and bringing the idea forward. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I know that, uh, for example, the Minor Forest Committee, this is a committee that's been around for over 60 years. It was one formed uh, in response to a tremendous gift of land uh, to the town in 1951. And really, that gift of land simply ratified what those folks had allowed everybody in town to do for 30 years prior, prior to that, which was to go use the land. This was simply the, the formalizing uh, approach they took to convey the land to the town. People have been walking in those woods for hundreds of years, and certainly uh, the, the Minot family, uh, from the time they owned it, never kicked anyone out. Uh, so I... I, I I wonder uh, when we include things like the Minor Forest Committee in this, if we're going to set up a super committee structure, I think really in order to pay the proper homage to the people who gave us this land, you would want a formalized subcommittee in that committee. Uh, I would say certainly the same thing for marine resources. That is uh, a rather specialized area. Everything else here, uh, you know, you can see a little bit of interconnectedness. Uh, they are, you know, we're talking about natural resources. They're not a land resource, and that's a, that's a different resource. It's a different uh, knowledge base. Uh, there's a lot of different things that go into that. So I think uh, it's going to be quite the task to try to meld all of these together. Uh, the other issue, of course, is, uh, as you said some of these are, are created or at least referenced in the town charter, which means you've got to go back to town meeting. If there's a charter change, then you've got to get it approved up in, by Beacon Hill. Uh, so there are some, there's a lot to be done here, but uh, again, I appreciate the work. And uh, if there isn't anything else from the board right now, why don't we listen to you folks? Who'd like to go first? I'll pick on you. I should leave the room. <laughs> Thank you. Sandy Slavin. Um, <coughs> oh, which committee? Uh, chair of Open Space and Chair of Mine at Forest. I think that's the only ones I'm on in this group, right? You just listed five. Yes, okay. Six. Six. Um, you didn't include, you didn't include um, litter, did you? Trash. trash is litter. Oh, Excuse me. okay. The committee that never formed. That's okay. correct. That is on here, but, but it never formed. For Westfield, I was a, I was I am a member of Westfield. Was a member. I was sunsetted. We were given the requirement to do an RFP for that Westfield. The RFP was done and submitted. And I think that's a closed committee now. Has to be done by town meeting. We yeah exactly. Town meeting said we only had that job, but anyway, that's beside the point. Um, I'm just concerned about each one of these committees has had their. Um, members um, knowledgeable in the um, focus of the committee that if we do have a single resource committee and then subcommittees most of us are now required to have two meetings a month one being the larger one and one being the subcommittee that we might want to be on in order to work on um, task outside of the bigger focus um, I think that was one of my concerns is that we have committees have had successes in bringing something forward to the town. Most of us have projects we are currently working on. Yes, open space hasn't had a lot of meetings. That's because we meet on the second Monday and I can't tell you how many holidays are on the second Monday which prevents us from meeting all the time. I don't know why we ever selected the second 
Monday, but that was before me, so that makes it hard. Um, I'm just concerned that some of our focus will be lost when it is uh, put into a larger pool. That's all. Angie? Minot Forest Committee, Angie Dunham. Um, I would like to echo some of that sentiment. I feel that because there's such a large number here to be melded together, that we would be attending more than one meeting because of these subcommittee meetings. And our meetings probably would be uh, very long. And sometimes when you have um, these long processes, nothing gets accomplished. Um, having been with the Minot Forest Committee for many years, we don't have a budget. Um, there is no money. So I don't really know if maybe we could possibly consider having a meeting with all of these committees that you are proposing and having a discussion workshop perhaps to see which committees would be better suited if you are going to uh, merge them. I don't know enough about these other committees to say whether or not we're compatible in, in what our focuses are or what our goals are. So at this point in time, I would respectfully request that perhaps the committees that you've listed, if we have an opportunity to have a workshop at some point where we could discuss our goals and see what we have in common and what would work best, what would be most efficient. Sometimes mergers aren't such a great idea, but I do have the same concerns that you all have that we don't have a quorum, and, and we in Minot Forest have had that for many years. I used to joke when I would come up and speak for Minot Forest, because I used to be chair, that um, I would be happy to bribe people with chocolate if they would consider please coming to the meetings. That didn't get me anywhere. So I, I missed <laughs> you missed that <laughs> opportunity. But anyway, um, that's how I feel, that I'd, I'd like that opportunity to have a workshop for all of us to discuss our common goals. I think that's a really good idea really good idea. I feel that uh, what she just said is uh, very appropriate and I think it would make a good starting place and I myself have always been in open space and that's many many years and there was a reason for it at the time but I don't know now what the reason is and I think we should Definitely. Well, there was money that was set aside that we got. I don't know if we still get that money. No. no. See, and <laughs> so with no funding. Right. But that doesn't mean it might not start again at some point. But I do believe that uh, what we should do is re reconnoiter and think about it and decide. About you. Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Warren Hall, uh, Marine Resources. Um, when I joined this last year, um, there was quite a few members, um, and we had regular meetings, um, but they've left, and um, <clears throat> I'm not sure advertising has worked uh, trying to get uh, members anywhere in here. Um, I don't know who reads the, the local papers or anything. Um, I think that's an issue. Um, nobody knows. And it, it was enjoyable. It was a bit of work um, and everything, but um, I did enjoy it. And um, now it's just Don and myself that show regularly. And it's not a quorum, so we show up for nothing. <laughs> but we still do. And it would be nice to, to get it going again. Um, I don't know what the answer is. Well, perhaps we can bring your associate up to full. That might be a start, yeah. at least. The associate doesn't want to do that. That's the issue. If, if I might <coughs> just, just add one thing, and I'm sure that's true with all the groups that are here. Um, the numbers that you're seeing there, you know, accurately reflect what 
you, you, you've seen and what's been reported. Um, but there's been a lot of work behind the scenes. We started meeting, you know, twice a month because we realized the task before us. But when we started to do that, uh, some of the members that had been on there previously, uh, for legitimate reasons, they it wasn't because we got on that they left. Uh, some had health issues. Some had, had other commitments that they uh, thought were more appropriate at the time. Um, but we have tried to meet. Uh, but the, the problem that, that we've had is more than anything else is is trying to get a quorum. You know, we've put in an agenda, you know, for once a month, and then we've tried to use that second uh, non-meeting as a workshop to try to move things along. We had some some false starts, and we haven't done the, uh, as much as we would have liked to. Um, but I think the biggest problem is not having a quorum and... Uh, well, the budget is, is, a, is a separate issue. We don't have any money either, but um, but really, it's it's the fact that I think the desire is here. It's just that we, you know, the way it's set up, uh, with, without a quorum, it doesn't appear that you've had a meeting. And even though we, and, you know, we we've, we've tried to be there as, at, at least uh, every meeting that we have posted, and then tried to do the others in and around some other reasons that we couldn't get there, but. But anyway, uh, I, my concern is, uh, and I agree that something needs to be done. I totally uh, agree with what you're uh, suggesting. But I kind of wonder, if, as, as we talk about this, whether some of the focus would be lost. Because I know the reason we joined the Marine Resources Commission was to try to focus on that part of it. Um, and it's not that I'm trying to minimize the other groups. I'm sure you have the similar feelings. That that's where your orientation was, and that's why you volunteered. You know, but I don't see any harm in, in trying to get together and having a workshop, and then see if uh, if there are people who ha are you know want to stay with their own committee or would like to branch off into maybe fewer committees. That may be w worthwhile in doing. So. Thank you all for your comments. Uh, Selectman Whiteside. Yeah. Again, nothing that I've put together um, or have said is meant to be a criticism of any of you. The fact that you show up to the meetings, even if there isn't a meeting, is, you know, yeah. we, we appreciate that. Um, the reason that these, are, these groups were put together is because the Mine at Forest really serves as what I would call passive recreation space. Um, the open space committee was charged by the town meeting to create a space, you know, an assessment of, of what we have and possibly what we would do with it and called for community input. Fields and Grounds committee was charged with making up a, uh, a report indicating all the playgrounds in the town with recommendations with what to do with them. Um, I know for a fact that um, I was unaware, and I was on the Fields and Grounds Committee, that was an open space committee that was, that we were really duplicating effort in many, many respects, and that, again, is not meant to be a criticism of anybody. Um, the, the trash committee that doesn't meet, that isn't a committee as far as I'm concerned, um, and the Fields and Grounds Committee really doesn't exist, and I agree with Mrs. Slavin that the Westfield Study committee, commission, whatever you were called, um, really doesn't exist either. The reason these six were picked really had to do with recreation, whether it be passive or active, um, and taking a, a really good look, as you all have, at the wonderful natural resources that this town has to offer its citizens, whether they be land or sea or ponds. Um, and I think a, a workshop is a spectacular idea. And I would suggest that I'd love to be there with you, or I will stay away, whichever way you want to do it. Um, one of the things that I think can be made available to you is money through the CPC funds because there's been a change in the laws, to my understanding. 
and therefore recreation, playgrounds, that kind of thing, can in fact receive funding, which is new. Am I correct? Thank you. Um, and so perhaps there's a way if you, you know, a bigger group makes a bigger noise um, and may in fact be able to focus on moving the town off the dime, the dime that we don't have, and enabling people to see what we have. Again, I am not being critical of any one of you or any member of any of your committees, but um, it's a suggestion to get you members, keep your members, and maybe get more people involved. Selectman Slavin. I didn't invent, obviously, the word natural resources. What I did when we first realized we had an issue that we weren't able to solve easily, I went through and was looking at other cities and towns to see where they were going. And this particular committee came up more and more for the same reason. Our federal government really does it the same way. Uh, even our own uh, state basically uses natural resources. We have some sustainability uh, groups. The University of Mass at Dartmouth had a sustainability uh, council and it broke all the pieces down that you all represent into subdivisions in one heading. So this actually all fits, and this is something we just didn't randomly put together. This all fits to what's going on around us right now. So it would be really a, a good thing if we could find out how to make it all work, uh, simply because we'd be a lot more productive, and there'd be more success, obviously, but there'd be more self-satisfaction. I, I still think there's nothing worse than being frustrated, not being able to get something accomplished because there are people out there uh, you're working hard, it's like you're being disappointed, and you, look, and you look at the town as if we're not supporting what's going on, and, and we need to get this done as a group. This is not the Board of Selectmen saying this is what's going to happen. This is really the town of Wareham saying, how do we make it work for the town? That's all. Mrs. Slavin. Thank you. I just want to ask a question. Quorum tends to be our biggest problem, is, is making we have issues all the time of um, whatever reason. Um, there are very legitimate reasons why we can't always meet. But my question for you is that we have this 11 board member. If we are to do subcommittees, do we ever have an issue with quorums in a subcommittee? So if we have two marine resources going off on working on their project, bringing it back to the board of 11, the two can still work on this project as a valid subcommittee under this, correct? Yes. So we can have subcommittees where we couldn't meet before because of quorum issues and then just bring it back to the 11-person board? Yeah, I believe you'd have right. to keep a, a record of minutes well, with that as well. I understand minutes, but I can have a subcommittee under less than the quorum that you're required to have now. Thank you. you you're have, welcome. You could have one. As a subcommittee, yeah. as an example, if you want subcommittee of one. So it's. It, but you wouldn't want to have it as a quorum. Uh, no. No, you. What, your subcommittee well, shouldn't be a quorum. The committee is more than one person. But I'm seeing not here, always. and I'm looking around the board, the table, and I'm not seeing some of the committees that do exist being represented here to speak to this proposal. They were all invited. But that's. That's part of the issue. That's part of the issue. We are missing what bike path. Yes. We're missing what was, did you say recycle? No, I said trash committee. Well, well, we know that doesn't exist, but there's no bike path here. Trash committee doesn't exist even though it was formed. Well, there's seven of you here, and it's what, 11 total between the, the Four committees? Four of us are from open space. Right. Four of us are from open space. Yeah. Two of us are from mine at Forest. Two well, of again, us marine resources. in my report, yeah. I have said that there are 18 people serving yeah. in the 40 slots mm -hmm. that are required by these boards and commissions. And again, I'm not being critical of any of the work that anybody has done because some of you wear at least one, two, seven Sorry. hats. I don't know what you do with your spare we made time. made 11 people, it'd be seven right here, right now. You'd yeah. have a nice little quorum. Nice quorum, and you go do your thing. You, have you go an do extra, your thing. Uh, some, and, some and you have to play with. Yeah. But and unfortunately, Mr. Capriano, we would be missing committees that would be part of, that should be part of the 11. But you would be those committees. If this is combined, you would be that committee. 
I don't think you'll find anybody here who is up to the bike path and where they stand with their proposals or anything like that. We don't have that expertise if you look at the people in front of you. Well, the okay, bike path guy is pretty active. I mean, he's been in here a bunch of times sitting in front of us. He has. So I think he'll show up. I don't know why he didn't come tonight, but I think you'll find him to be uh, involved. Yeah. And the, the, the fields and grounds honestly doesn't exist because it gave a exactly. report, and that report really should be and was made available to open space. And there's actually on our no website, members. It's been um, mentioned in our RFP, yes. Yep. Yeah, actually, I tried two different um, venues of going in, and you cannot access it from the... speak to Mr. Underhill. Okay, thank you. I've seen it through it. Oh, you have? Yes. Okay. Um, and so, again, I, I believe that our, my, Mr. Slavin and myself, are trying to enable you to do what you want to do and what you have shown interest in as opposed to kicking you in the teeth. That's not what this is. This is a how can we help you get it done mm -hmm. and make it worth your while and have the town understand how much work goes into creating and using the awesome stuff that we have in this town. We have, you know, 17 playgrounds. How many of you knew that, you know? <laughs> 19, really. 19. Actually, that list is short one. I, find, I found one more. I've, I've got to get a, an updated version of that. So it, it, again, I, I think a workshop would be um, extremely valuable, and it should include um, the Westfield study, because if that was town meeting created, even though it's discharged, it needs to be discharged. Um, we don't have an energy committee. It was never formed, never met, and maybe that goes into a green initiative as opposed to a natural resources. I don't really know. It falls but in the same overall area. It falls in the same overall area. You know, do we really want to be a green community at some point? I don't mean that we have a lot of trees. Um, but there certainly is an enormous body of work that has been put together in, in yes. for instance, the Marine Resources Commission. I know you have scads of stuff that has been done, but no way of getting it done. And, and that's what we're trying to help all of you out with. Well, well thank you. Is there anything else from the board? I'm good. Anything else from our committee, folks? Thank you all for coming tonight and taking time out of your uh, busy lives to uh, attend a non-meeting of a meeting. <laughs> thank you. Sir. Are we going to be notified if that workshop is? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this, this is not going to be a secret workshop. No, it's <laughs> going to be, a, it would be. That wouldn't do us much good. You want to vote on a night that we're, we're going to do it? <laughs> well, we're, 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 this will be in January. It's not going to yeah. be anything before and, the holidays. And would you, <laughs> could you do a, like a Saturday or something like that, a Saturday morning? Would that be awful? We can poll people. If that's set, setting up something, yeah. sending something up can, can be done, something that's but it, done again, outside the, of the meeting. But again, everyone on this grid and you will all get copies of the grid mm -hmm. um, I've asked that we put this on the agenda for the 7th to set a date and see if we can make it work or at least 7th of January on our agenda and then figure out a date in the middle of January okay. mm -hmm. 7th to 14th we're starting to I know. pile up the 7th pretty heavy well, here this won't take long this is just a decision to come up with a date frame and to pick yeah. a date and see if everybody can fit into it because we're not doing this we're not just saying oh it's going to get done we're it is, as Alan said earlier, a very long process because some of these. Mr. Chair? Yes. Will you be, will this Board of Selectmen be working to make the changes for some of these committees? Like sunsetting, making sure Westfield closes and making yes, sure fields and grounds close? Yes, ma'am. Okay, even though some of it is not under your privy. Well, that, that's that, if, it, if it's created yeah. by town meeting and no, it's. I'm talking fields and grounds. Well, fields and grounds. Uh, it was my understanding is that it was created for more than just a report. My understanding is that they re retain uh, to this day some superintendents over uh, athletic fields. No, that is uh, and incorrect. Any number of things was was my basic understanding. I believe. Well, then there's some uh, confusion on that that we need to settle first. So before Did we get into this, but we're not going to do that tonight. Yeah, no. But I'm saying the reason that I put the genesis of each one of these down was so that you would know how they were created. And I gave you the copy of the town meeting articles, if that's what it was. But I think their reference, perhaps, either in the charter or the bylaws, is having some additional responsibility. No. 
just as a quick explanation, not to take any more time, Fields and Grounds was done at town meeting, but town meeting set up the appointing authority, the moderator, and two other pe two other officials for that particular committee. So we don't have direct jurisdiction over that particular committee. That has to be done at town meeting. One one more thing, um, just as you consider. Uh, the open space committee is required to have a representative on community preservation commission So as you think about what to do with these committees if you are to combine them, please consider that impact on the CPC I think it would be really helpful if all of the stakeholders in other words members from all of these six things would um, boards and commissions would forward their concerns I'll beat the funnel if you want yep. um, so that we have all of that information in front of us when we when we do the workshop either with you or without you i mean without us without me you know what i'm saying so <laughs> well again thank you all very much for coming thank it's appreciated and thank you for your thank continued you. service to the town next item please next item i think was just a uh, request uh, for an update on the status of the master plan committee the main issue here is we still don't have a town planner and uh I'm not, we want to make sure that we have everybody else in place that's supposed to apply it or the particular different uh, positions from the town that was supposed to be in place. You know I, what the status is? Uh, I don't know what the, I mean, as I know right now, everybody. Microphone. Microphone, oh, sorry. But they've been waiting for um, a, a planner. Everybody's, you know, we talked, I've talked to a few of the people on the committee and everybody's saying, well, do we have a planner yet? And really, that's, uh, it's kind of hard to, where we, it's not like we don't know the community, the people that are on this committee. It's not like some of us don't have expertise in certain areas, but it really takes a planner to pull it all together. And until we have a planner, it's going to be very difficult to do this. Okay. Can you confirm for us the next meeting that everybody's in place except for the planner? I can do that. That'll be good, just in case we have an issue. Can I okay. just ask one question, Mr. Tropiano? Would it be, do all of the members have a copy of the current master plan do you know no they don't I'm Would not sure that we have a copy of the master plan and I remember that thing was lost for a long time no. for a long time it's, it's up in the administration office I'll see if I can get a copy of it I'll see what we can do because I think it would be getting, it out, getting it out to each of the members so far see and if have we them can get it out to them yeah. read what is in there and good you know idea. give them an opportunity that's a very good idea actually I've got some information also. Believe it or not, that's okay. not the first one that was. <laughs> no. When we did that that particular one, I was here when we did mm. this, the one we have now. And the one prior to that one, nobody could find. <laughs> we didn't have anything to use. Yeah. And I remember there somebody saying, we better keep this one in a place where everybody can find it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. We actually did Policy some time. out of that, out of that you know. Say, continue on discussion on, and possible vote on policies 81 1 3 4 5 6. Okay, take the lead here. Okay, everybody has copies that were given out through Shirley in the office. 88 1, uh, the information says basically at the end of the first paragraph, add new sentence. This policy will include any changes made to Mass General Law as concerns public information request upon passage by the state of Massachusetts. At the end of the first sentence in paragraph three, which ends with clause 26 add, this policy will include any changes made to Massachusetts general law as concerns public information request upon passage by the state of Massachusetts. Item three, eliminate second sentence of last paragraph and replace with this policy will set fee as follows, 30 cents per page copied, Research time will be charged at a rate per hour to cover the town employee's total hourly costs, which includes fringe benefits and taxes, for the employee charged with performing the research work. Part four, add a new paragraph at the end, request for public information by town committees, boards, and commissions appointed by the Board of Selectmen. So I'll sh submit such request with an explanation to the Board of Selectmen showing it falls, how it falls into that committee, board, or commission's areas of responsibility. Those committees, boards, or commissions shall so submit to their appointing authority the finance committee through the rights provided by, by mass general law shall be exempt I the reason for the appointing authority is we do have certain committees that are appointed by the moderator and uh, chairman of the board of selectmen and either the chairman of the 
Planning Board or the Chairman of the Finance Committee. I would move that we accept those changes to Policy 88-1 as read by Mr. Slavin. Motion made by Selectman Second. Whiteside, seconded Second. by Selectman Tropiano. Uh, the only comment I would make at this time is that somebody brought to my attention recently that uh, different departments in town are charging different fees for copying. We may want to come back and set a uniform fee amount for everything for copies rather than have, you know, one one fee being imposed at the police uh, station, another another fee uh, imposed at the clerk's window, a third fee imposed uh, if you go to the selectman's office, whatever. Uh, so uh, that's something we may come back to, but for the time being, I suppose we can up this one to more reflect the current reality and the increases since uh, 1988. Okay. Anything Pol else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstained, Four zero zero. Policy 88-3, eliminate first two paragraphs and replace with any individual upon being appointed to any commission, board, or committee must complete tests provided by the state on conflict of interest and ethics rules. See Mass General Law 268A. The individual must supply a copy of the completed test to the town clerk's office. The certification is good for two years upon expiration. The individual must retake the test and file a copy of completed test with the town clerk's office. Move the uh, recommendations for change to policy 88-3 as read by Mr. Slavin. Second. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Tropiano. Obviously, the purpose here is to get everything into the clerk's office where it's supposed to go. Yes. Uh, thank you for that work. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? 400. Policy 88 4. After second paragraph, remove the following from the list provided Assistant Director of Municipal Maintenance, Park General Foreman, Cemetery General Foreman, Building Inspector, Wiring Inspector, Plumbing Inspector, Police Captain. Uh, this has to do with uh, taking vehicles home, I believe. Why did you take police captain on this? Uh, good question. There is police captain, believe it or not, we don't have a captain right now. No, and we don't. so there wouldn't be any danger of him taking a car home. However, that position is on still on the books, isn't it? On the board. That's correct. Yeah. So that position is just left vacant. At some point, that position may want to get filled, or we may want to fill that position. So. We may have to uh, talk about that. I think you should leave that one in. We'll remove that out if that's convenient with everybody. I took it out because it wasn't a, a fill position anymore. Right. I'll move. Um, I, I like the other removals because I think th th those were kind of silly anyway. I'll move the. Um, you left the health agent in, right? Health agent has his own vehicle, but he doesn't take it home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he takes it. I think well, before we uh, before we proceed with this, uh, why don't we let. Uh, the town administrator take a look at this because there may be, I'm thinking, possibly some contractual issues with some of it or some policy issues from his perspective. So why don't we, uh, why don't you pass your changes to me and I'll show him the original policy. Contractual issues? With regards to the use of a vehicle. We just had a police chief uh, leave our employee who had a car. So well, but the chief of police that. is in here. Uh, the billing inspector wiring plumbers from plumbing inspector, they wouldn't have anything in their contract that says they can have a car. Yeah, that'd be the building inspector. That's the inspector, not the director. Not the director. Yep. And uh, the park general foreman, the assistant director of municipal maintenance, none of those guys would have whatever. The only problem with the assistant director of municipal maintenance is during snow season, he may be quite often on call. You may want to hold off on, uh, on that policy. Um, there is no r assistant director. That's why I took it out. At this moment, yeah. so are you saying there could be an assistant director sometime in the future? As we look to reorganize every department, uh, you know, there's there's probably some things coming down the line that could change. Uh, well, if you want, we can put this in. This is a policy. This doesn't require a town meeting or anything. Well, okay. we let's can just change it if needed. As of right now, this is current. Why don't What's we there? put it off for a week? And let uh, that's uh, it's uh, it's actually fine if there's any changes that need to be made I can always request it to the board of selectmen. Okay. Then I move it as um, amended amended by Mr. Slavin policy 88-4 on concerning town owned vehicle usage. Second. Okay, motion made by selectman Whiteside, seconded by selectman Tropiano. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstain 400. 88-5. Went through that no change required. Yes, change required. The um, second to last paragraph, 
first sentence, that has to be a colon, not a semicolon. It's not funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> stuff drives me nuts. Uh, Which one are we looking at here? We'll call the script this error. We don't have to make a policy change. We'll just update it. Fine. I move that we just um, reaffirm policy 88-5. With a colon. With a colon, as okay. indicated. Scrivener's yeah. error. Okay, the last one. For well, actually, if you if you're going to be a strict grammarian, you should oh, you should just okay. eliminate the punctuation there and say shall include this comma that comma the other thing comma. No. Uh, no. If you want to say shall include the following, then you can use your colon. Did your mother teach English? <laughs> I'm an English major. So am I. How many English degrees do you have? Uh oh. Got PhDs here, piled higher and deeper. Uh, I'm challenging you. Would a JD be considered an advanced degree in English? Counselor? No. no. I think you know the answer I'm seeking here. The answer is no. There you go. Whatever. Whatever. All right, let's, we'll put the colon in there. <laughs> Just fix the, the, fix the grammar. Motion the colon. All in favor, the, aye. Because uh, the, the, the English teacher says so. 88-6. Add after fourth paragraph, after the word unforeseen, new paragraph, emergency, dash, when needed is classified as an emergency, the funds requested are for a temporary fix only, a permanent fix requires approval at town meeting. Last paragraph, first sentence, remove business manager and replace with finance director. Just update what's been changed. Yeah, that's Can you read the first one that you did? I didn't get it, that one. It says emergency. We had... I'll explain quickly. We've had a couple issues where uh, the town has used the word emergency to go ahead and do something which really didn't classify as a true emergency okay. and went ahead and fixed it. Okay. So to eliminate the uh, problem that we've had several times recently, when, when need is classified as an emergency, which we have a description in that in the town charter and bylaws, the funds requested are for a temporary fix only. A permanent fix requires approval at town meeting. Okay. I just <laughs> want to point out that the um, paragraph that reads transfer requests may be made is the most irritating grammatical paragraph I've ever seen in my life. I move that we adopt. Um, I can't do it. <laughs> um, I suppose you can move to adopt what he just said. 88-6, reserve fund transfer requests by Mr. Slavin. Second. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Tropiano. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. And that concludes the policy discussion. The chairman will assign us uh, from the list of another four or five or six, whatever you'd like. We only got thirty some more to go. I'll pick off another five for next week. Fine with me. Why don't we? Do you want to finish this agenda and then we can do them last? Well, we're done with this. That's as far as we go today. I have a. Uh, May I just ask a question? Sure. Did you give us a copy of your, a written copy of your proposed changes? And I lost it in the mail. He sent it. He sent them all by email. Those are, okay. So you, the, okay. Um, God, my email didn't stop. <laughs> okay, that, I probably didn't print it. No, that's right. Stay away from the vacation, will you? Okay. Keep them away. Keep them out of that place. Uh, okay. I mean, why don't we finish the agenda items? Because some of these people don't want to sit around and wait for us to approve these licenses. Right? No. Of course they going? do. No. I don't think this, yeah, there's really nothing of interest here as we go down the list of God knows how many uh, liquor licenses. And Next item is any town business not anticipated in 24 hours. 48, so 40, 48 hours, sorry. Yeah, I have one. Mrs. Whiteside, do you have anything? You have one? No, I have um, a liaison report, but no. Nope, not, that, not time for that yet. Mr. Tropiano? I don't have anything for four years. The only thing I have is it came in to us a request uh, for the um, CPC. Uh, they were looking for us as a board to appoint somebody to replace the recreational slot. Um, I'll do this very quickly because it's a long night already. Um, some time ago, I think it was two or three years ago, uh, we realized that the recreation department didn't exist anymore. It was uh, the CPC was set up through town meeting and a vote, and the committee was set up at the same time. Um, one of the members of the CPC asked me if I would write an article 
uh, to eliminate that particular position as recreational and move it to a just a regular general, you know, open. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when it went to town meeting, there was a member of the particular committee objected f for reasons of their own, and it didn't happen. So what they're looking for now is for this board to go ahead and appoint someone to fill something that doesn't exist when they could have very simply fixed it by a change of town meeting vote. Uh, because town meeting did pass and vote that way, I don't see anywhere in the charter where if someone says they claim there might be something where it allows us to go ahead and appoint someone for a recreational committee that doesn't exist. No, absolutely not. Well, me neither, but I'm just repeating what the request is. You got in the, we got in our, our packet today, or at least we got in our emails on our town account today asking us to do something like this and I just think that the correct thing is uh, to go back to the beginning go back to the beginning of the town meeting so we can put it on the agenda for the next time but I just wanted to bring it up it did come up and you know they were looking for that because they are having some quorum issues at times too but that's exactly the same kind of thing that we're addressing with the presentation yes. right but this was just a this is just a direct response to the specific inquiry okay, okay. that's it Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the, there's a simple report tonight. I just wanted to update with the uh, the ambulance itself. The bid price for it was two hundred and seventeen thousand and sixty five dollars. We are going to finance that over three years, uh, two point three nine percent. The annual payment will be seventy four thousand seventy dollars and fifty one cents. So if you remember, we had budgeted eighty thousand dollars. Uh, so we are well within that, and uh, over the three years, we will pay $5,146.53 in interest. Uh, probably after this three-year period, we know that the ambulance costs will increase to purchase a new one, but this sets us on the path to be able to start purchasing a new ambulance approximately every three years and keeping our fleet new, serviceable, and uh, safe for the public. I think our newest vehicle at this time is a 2006. So uh, I think this is something that I'm very excited about for the town. So thank you. Anything uh, for Mr. Sullivan? Select Ms. Slavin. My day to day again. Uh, first item I have, uh, Mrs. Whiteside is working on the uh, the committees, I was left off to talk about the regionalization issues. Um, what I would like, I sent off to everybody, they probably didn't get it because I sent it off late in the day today, uh, regionalizational programs for town, districts, and surrounding towns. I've listed about, I guess, a, I count about, about 12 different items to look at, working with the town, with the schools, also with the Wareham Fire and Water District, Onset Fire and Water District, reaching out to Marion, Rochester, Carver, and Bourne to see where we have synergies. What I would like to ask of the town administrator is uh, if he wants to make myself a designee or himself to try and uh, basically reach out to the people involved so we can sit down and start to have some meetings so we can come up with some basic uh, ideas of where there is synergies, where there is places where we can work together in joint ventures, et cetera. This would be the first step in what we discussed last week. I think Mr. Slavin should be a designee. That's the town administrator's decision, not mine. Yep, yeah, let's meet on it. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I think that'll be fine. That's number one. Number two, well, as you know, the, we uh, basically uh, assigned to the town administrator, not as designee, actually, the, on the <laughs> TDR. Uh, I did meet with uh, SERPED. Uh, and I met with uh, John Whitten, the attorney, and uh, Charlie Rowley. Uh, Mr. Barrett couldn't make it. We sat down at Serped's office to start to put the parameters, which I told Mr. Sullivan ahead of time that we were going to start for him, uh, about getting a TDI done. The first step is to really find out, to basically come up with a workshop in the middle of January uh, to explain what a TDR is, what the sending and receiving areas are, and, what, and how they're going to work, et cetera. We're going to try and get this out to the public and fully explain it out. So I'm again going to need uh, Mr. Sullivan's help in getting the, in the basically the planning chair, uh, chairman or representative of the planning board conservation and ZBA and the actually director of inspectional services to sit down 
and talk about their part of all this as to sending, receiving, etc. Because I would like to have a workshop sometime between the 10th and 15th of January to work on this first piece, which is strictly a workshop. We're not going to have any kind of TDR bylaw or anything. It's strictly going to be informational, getting feedback from the people in town with questions as far as what a TDR is and why we have sending and receiving areas and what we're trying to accomplish. Right. And my last thing is, do we have any update from Northeastern on the EdStat program yet? Um, I, do, I don't. Okay. If you could reach out and make sure they don't forget us. Yeah. It's, since they're giving us a $10,000 program for free, we might as well be aggressive about it. That's it for me. Okay. I didn't have anything. Uh, okay, let's, uh, I have a procedural question for council here. Uh, do we have to make separate motions for each single renewal? Or can we say, uh, I move to renew uh, the following year round retail, packaged goods store, all alcoholics, blah, 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 uh, numbered uh, Roman numeral one through Roman numeral uh, 29? <laughs> no, actually, no. That, uh, that would be Roman numeral 13 for that category. Can we do it in that fashion, or do we have to name each one? Uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I was puzzling over that very question because you could be here for two hours just reading off these things individually. I, if I could make a sample motion, um, I think it'll sound like what you just described. Uh, so, for example, this would be a sample motion for item 6B. Uh, I move to, re to renew the following year-round retail package goods store all alcoholic beverage licenses for the year 2014 under the provisions of Chapter 138 of the General Laws as printed in the Board of Selectmen item agenda under 6B Roman numerals I through XII. Or I guess you could just say one Roman numerals 1 through 13. 13. Somebody say so moved. <laughs> so moved. Uh, we'll get a second on second. that. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstained. They're all four zero zero. Oh, I love it. Okay. Would Next. you uh, go ahead? Like me to? Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Have a book. Stay right the there. Th hang on, because those are the. This is the next one. Is the one where the three. Yeah, we got a holds. problem with one of them. We hope we take. We got to take out Concord, right? We got to take out Hold X up. V I I I and. It was, it's on the agenda properly, right? It's not yes. on. It's just not on. It's the on the license properly. properly, right? So we're removing. Number XBII. 18. 18. Con Cole, Inc. And yep. then the DBA two. narrows. It's just they wrote it wrong. They put it wrong on that thing. They put it as a DBA from an individual and not a corporation. I'm sorry, Patrick. Which one? And one? also um, X. Con Cole, Inc. It's number 18. And number okay. 24 and 25. 24 and 25. We want to do well. separate. We want to do it separately for an explanation. 24, 25. I can I can make a motion. Okay. With your permission, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, my job anyway. I move to renew uh, the following year-round common victual all-alcoholic beverage licenses for the year 2014 under the provisions of Chapter 138 of the Mass General Laws as printed in the Board of Selectmen's agenda under 6C, Roman numerals 1 through 17, Roman numerals 18, uh, I mean, pardon me, Roman numerals 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 26, 27, 28, and 29. So moved. Second. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Tropiano. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, abstained. 400 on all of those. Do those last two. Okay, now, just as an explanation, we have the Narrows Crossing. Unfortunately, the license as written uh, doesn't have the right uh, corporate name on the front of it, so we'll get that changed and do that on the 17th. We have two license requests that were for background, uh, so everybody understands, we have two licenses that were assigned to the Rosebrook project. Uh, those licenses were part of eight licenses that were given to the town over and above their allotment uh, through the state. Uh, they were assigned to specific purposes and locations. They can't be changed or moved. Therefore, we have two that are there, which we would uh, go ahead and renew. And they're basically under, one is under Rosebrook Place Hospitality, LLC, doing business as Rosebrook Place Hospitality Inn and Conference Center, 2472 Cranberry Highway, manager James F. Kane. 
The second one is the same, Roseburg Place Hospitality, LLC, doing business as Roseburg Place Hospitality, 2476 Cranberry Highway, Manager James F. Kane. So moved. Don't you need all of verbiage of the common bit? Just read the heading again, I guess. So it's an annual common Vic all alcoholic beverage license. It's under uh, grants, board of selectmen grant. So moved with the addition of renewal the, of the. Uh, it's, it's under the Liquor Control Act, Chapter 130 of the General yeah, Laws. Exactly. Second. Yeah, it's fine. Which expires December 31st, 2014. Okay, motion made by Selectman Tropiano, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, 400. Okay, now D. You're back. Yeah. Um, you're, 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 you're on. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move the renewal of the following year round convict for, uh wine and malt beverages licenses for the year 2014 under the provisions of Chapter 138 of the Mass General Laws as printed in Selectman's Agenda Item 6D, Roman numerals 1 and 2. So moved. A motion made by Selectman Whiteside. Second. Seconded by Selectman Tropiano. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstained, 4 0 yeah, This has to become part of the minute, minutes now, this, this yes. Uh, agenda. Yes. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just make sure that it gets in there. It's going in the folder. Yeah, absolutely. It can't, it can't be just no. Yeah. like we typically do. Whew. Not going to happen. Okay, um, next one, which is under E. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following year round club all all alcoholic beverages licenses for the year 2014 under the provisions of Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws as printed in the Selectman's Agenda, Item 6E, Roman numerals 1 and 2. So moved. Motion Second. made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Tropiano. All in favor? I mm -hmm. oppose abstain 4 0 0. Um, Mr. Chairman, I move <laughs> to renew the following year round Veterans Club All Alcoholic Beverages License for the year 2014 under the provisions of Chapter 138 of the Mass General Laws, as printed in Selectman's Agenda, Item 6F, Roman numerals 1 and 2. So moved. Second. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Topiano. All in favor, aye. Opposed, abstain, 4 0 0. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the following applications for year-round liquor licenses to remain open until 2 a.m. on January 1st, 2014 for New Year's Eve parties to be held December 31st, 2013 under the provisions of Chapter 138 of the Mass General Laws as listed under Selectman Agenda Item 6G, uh, Roman numerals 1 through 7. So moved. Second. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Tropiano. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Uh, just to give these folks some free advertising for New Year's Eve, the establishments uh, where, we just, where we just approved the the hours are Barnacle Bob, Gateway Tavern, Eller's Wood Burning Oven Restaurant, the Dudley Brown Post, VFW Post, uh, Stevie B's, Hong Kong Island, and the Wareham Lodge of Elks. So there's your free advertising for the evening. Uh, anything else? Are we done? I have one. We have uh, liaison reports, Mrs. Whiteside. No. Yes. Um, I'd like to. Um, bring to the board's attention something that they probably already know, and that is that the Veterans Council is um, not able to meet, um, and there are quorum issues, and so we need to, they're kind of at a, at a standstill. Um, and I, may I ask Mr. White to address us, sir? May I ask Mr. White to address us on that issue? He's probably He's asleep. He's asleep. Are you asleep? No, here he comes. He's just he's Use just the slow. Mic. He's not asleep, he's slow. <laughs> Use the mic. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um it's my uh, understanding that the Wareham Veterans Council uh, has a number of members who have come and gone by default. If you're around and you're available, you might be invited to join without any appointments at all. Um, I don't think they've had any legitimate meetings in some time. I have been to some of the meetings and uh, 
I think those ceased basically six or eight months ago. I understand the chairman, who is Mr. Newman, has resigned, and it's my understanding also that no attempt was made to replace him. Um, having worked as an agent for that committee or that council, along with uh, Sharon Boyer, <coughs> I think it would be hers, and I know it's mine, um, desire to have that council uh, revitalized or in some way um, raised to a higher level of energy. Um, we will want to begin to go forward f for other Veterans Day activities, um, and we need we need the organization to be able to do that. At the very least, I'm hoping that um, this board will p provide a, s a liaison who can be a spearhead to get the organization back on track in terms of uh, researching the law and determining um, who should constitute this committee. I guess seeing as how I brought it up, I will volunteer unless somebody else is desperate. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Mrs. <laughs> Whiteside. <laughs> Thank you. I'll return somebody to my warrant. Desperate. <laughs> Works for me. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Move to adjourn. What is everybody having so much fun? We don't get a second. 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 Motion made by Selectman Tropiano, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Four zero zero. Thank you all. Good night. Thanks for hanging in there for a fairly long meeting. <laughs>